Welcome. Let's take a look at how we can connect the area under a curve to calculus ideas. So we have Sanjay here and he's walking at a velocity that's constantly three miles per hour. So first of all, let's go ahead and graph Sanjay's velocity for t greater than or equal to zero. Notice that our vertical axis is labeled in terms of miles per hour, and our horizontal axis is labored in terms of hours. So if Sanjay is walking at a constant velocity of three miles per hour, the graph of his velocity would look something like this, with a horizontal line at um, three on the vertical axis. And so now we have a question here about how far did Sanjay walk in two hours and how can we relate this to our graph? So our horizontal axis relates the period of time for which Sanjay has been walking at a rate of three miles per hour. So if we're interested in how far Sanjay walked in two hours, we're looking at a time duration between t equals zero and t equals two. And if we're interested in how far he walked, what we can do is we can think about what is the meaning of this area between the horizontal line and the x or t axis. Well, so this creates a rectangle here for us and the vertical sides of the rectangle um, have length three. They also have units of miles per hour. And our horizontal axis on our, our horizontal sides of our rectangle have a have a measure of two, but they also have units of hours. So if, if I were to ask you without the graph, if someone walks at a constant velocity of three miles per hour, and I told you that they walked for two hours, uh, you might do something like this. You might say um, they walked three miles per hour times two hours and the units of hours would divide out and you'd end up with something like six miles. Or you might do something like, well, if they um, walked three miles per hour and they walked for two hours, in the first hour they would walk three miles and in the second hour they would walk three miles. And so the sum of those two, representing two hours with three miles within each hour, would also give us six miles. So there's a number of ways that we can reason out that uh, Sanjay walked six miles in two hours. We can also use this rectangle that's been created and we can consider the area of this rectangle. So the area of this rectangle is three miles per hour times two hours, which would end up giving us six miles. So this area of this rectangle, where we take not only the measure of each side, but the units associated with each side of the rectangle, produce the same results as what we might reason out. So you might wonder, well, why would I bother doing this? And of course, eventually things are going to get more complicated and it's not going to be 
as simple as a horizontal line and this region being a rectangle. However, in the meantime, let's continue thinking about this context. So we know that Sanjay walks at a constant velocity of three miles per hour. And now let's think about what is the relationship between Sanjay's velocity and how far he walked. And then we'll go ahead and um, graph his position. So what is the relationship between velocity and how far he walked? Well, what do we know about velocity? So we know that Sanjay's velocity is three miles per hour. It's constant. We also know that velocity is the de derivative of position. So if we want to know how far he walked, we would want to track his position over time. Think about if you go for a walk, how far you walk depends on your position over the period of time that you are actually walking. So let's go ahead and since uh, velocity is the derivative of position, then position would be the antiderivative of velocity. And in Sanjay's case, that would be the antiderivative of 3 dt. Let's go ahead and bring that constant of 3 in front. And so we have 3 times the antiderivative of 1 dt. And then um, the antiderivative of 1 dt is t. So we'd have 3 times t plus our constant of integration. Now let's go ahead and make an assumption that the distance that Sanjay walks is measured starting at time t equals zero. What this means then is if we start measuring the distance that Sanjay walks, um, the distance at time t equals zero will be zero as he is just commencing his walk. So this little detail based on our assumption will allow us to find the constant of integration for our position function that we found. So if s at 0 equals 0, that means that 3 times 0 plus c equals 0, which then implies that c equals 0. This 3 times 0 multiplies to zero. Okay, so our position function is s of t equals 3t. So the relationship, because um, Sanjay walked at a constant velocity of three miles per hour, uh, notice that our position function is a constant multiple of time. So after one hour, three times one, Sanjay will have walked three miles. After two hours, Sanjay will have walked three times two or six miles and so forth. So let's go ahead and graph our function on the graph here. And so notice that um, the graph here, we've created a line. And so Notice that with a constant velocity that the position function is linear and that the slope of that line is equal to the velocity of um, the person walking at that constant velocity. So what we've seen is that if we have a constant velocity v of t equal to 3 miles per hour, that the position function is a linear function, a line, where the slope of that line is 3, or equal to that constant velocity. So the question that then arises is, for what values is the position of Sanjay increasing? 
And why does that make sense? Well, if we look at the position function, the S of T function, we can see that um, Sanjay's position is increasing for values of T that are greater than or equal to greater than zero, right? We can see that um, for x1 less than x2 and pick any two points on the x-axis that the function value at x2 is greater than the function value of x1. But we're talking calculus. And so let's make sense of this in terms of calculus. Why does this make sense? Well, our derivative is positive. V of t is greater than zero. And the first derivative being positive tells us that uh, the function itself is increasing. So because V of t is positive for uh, t greater than or equal to zero, um, and v of t is the first derivative, we know that based on the first derivative being positive, that um, the, the position is increasing. It also makes sense physically. If I walk out my door and I'm walking at a rate of three miles per hour for a period of time, my position will always be increasing. So I hope you find this helpful. Have a good day.